Today we're going to talk about image augmentation, specifically using the image data generator library from the Keras preprocessing image uh, library. So let's uh, get right into it. So our data set we're going to be using today has three different uh, labels, daisy, rose, and tulip, each of which only have one image inside of them. So small data set. And that's really what image augmentation is really all about. Uh, you have a small data set or a data set that you can't find more data on. So in our case, flowers, uh, you can easily find more data on it. But if you're working with something really specific like x-rays or brain scans, something that's uh, perhaps you don't have a large amount of data for, uh, and you want to augment it, this is what that's for. So let's get right into it. So from keras.preprocessing.image, you want to go ahead and import a few things. Image data generator. You also want array to image, image to array, and you also want load image. These allow our uh, our image to be loaded into a NumPy array easily. You're also going to want OS, and um, you may want TQDM um, depending on how many images you're going to use and how many images you're going to create. So in our case, we literally have three images, three labels. And uh, for the sake of the, the video, of course, we're not going to be generating hundreds of images. But uh, uh, depending on your scenario, you probably want an application. You definitely want to use this. It's just a loading bar in case you don't know. It just makes it nicer to know what's going on. So now we're going to go ahead and call our image data generator. And this takes a bunch of arguments here. First of all, we have rotation range, which is uh, how much we will allow our image to be rotated. We also have our width shift range, which is how much we will allow our image to be shifted on the x-axis. And a similar thing for the height shift range on the y-axis. And then uh, for our shear range, this is how much we will allow the image to be cut. Now uh, we'll do 0.2 in this case. Uh, zoom range. Um, you can really mess with this one. You can really mess with all of these values depending on your data set. Zoom range, though, uh, you know, if you're working with something high quality, I'm talking like... 40 megapixel and above. You could probably do something like this, but in our case, we're working with uh, 1080p and a little bit above that for our three images. So we'll just do 0.3. Nothing too crazy. And then for our horizontal flip, we want this to be true. Uh, this just allows our images to be flipped. And uh, for our fill mode, we want that to be nearest. So nearest. And then um, for brightness range, this isn't something that you necessarily have to use. Uh, this is really you knowing your data set, right? How will your, uh, your image classifier be applied? So in our situation with flowers, we can reasonably expect our image classifier to be used outside, inside, and in quite a range of different lighting environments. So we definitely want a brightness range on our image classifier. But perhaps you're working with something like an x-ray that has a very uh, very normalized background lighting and you don't really need a brightness range. I would recommend it regardless of that, but uh, especially given that you know we're working with three images and we want to build an image classifier with three images. So now let's move on and let's go ahead and iterate and grab these images. So we have a, um, a main folder called images with three subfolders Let's just get right into it. So we'll say for image folder in os.lister uh, images, uh, we will go ahead and um, make a new directory for our new images. So we'll just put this in a try accept. And this is just so that in case you want to run this again, you aren't going to overwrite your previously created directory pretty important. So pass. So now we'll go ahead and say for file, this is now our images that we're working with. Um, so images, image folder. Yeah, sure did a uh, host that joined their boat. That's okay. So now we're going to go ahead and um, make our, uh, our subfolders. So again, that's in new images and that's going to be the name of the image folder. So we're going to create a new uh, folder at this level called new images and in that level in that folder we're going to have a new folder called daisy, rose, and tulip. 
we want the same labels, uh, or else you know it can get very confusing. So now we're going to work with the uh, NumPy array. So we'll just say image to array. Uh, oh, didn't load it yet. So let's so image. Let's do image equals load image, and we'll go ahead and load this image. So it's an images uh, image folder, and then it is called file. So this loads our uh, image in each subfolder. And now we want to load that. So we'll say x equals image to array image. So now we have this in a NumPy array. Great. Now, though, we need to uh, reshape it. So what we'll reshape this um, while uh, maintaining the resolution of our image. So that's what this is. So what this uh, essentially will look like now is exactly like this. And that three is because the image is RGB. You know, an RGB uh, image has uh, three values representing each pixel. If it was uh, if it was gray, then it would be one. Pretty straightforward because in a gray grayscale image, you only have a pixel with you know some value, let's say zero or sixty, what have you. All right, so now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and uh, create a counter variable. We'll just call it i for simplicity, and now we'll say for batch in datagen.flow. And the reason we want a counter variable is because uh, this datagen.flow will actually go forever unless you use a counter variable. So we want to pass in our uh, NumPy array there that we've just reshaped. We want our uh, batch size to be equal to one. Oh, data gen, because that's what we called it here, data gen. So data gen, and we want to save this to the directory that we've uh, specified earlier that we just created, and that's in new images plus image folder. And now we want our save prefix a prefix that we want that to be our image folder. It's just a prefix of the save and then of course we want our save format. Uh, in our case we'll just do JPEG. Uh, you can do PNG, you can do quite a bit here. Uh, JPEG is nice and easy to work with so we'll do JPEG. So we'll increment our counter and we'll say if i is greater than, uh, let's just do three for the sake of the video and then we'll break it. So we'll generate four pictures and uh, break after that. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Works the first time. Ooh, uh, DS store. Yeah, so this is an issue you can run into on, um, on Mac OS. So we'll just CD into images and we'll delete that file and rerun it. This is why it's important to do uh, the try accept loop on there, the try accept uh, on the folder creation. So you can see it's generating pictures here. So let's go ahead and take a look at these pictures. So this is in the daisy folder. You can see that it's uh, it's been cropped and rotated. And uh, you can see the image gets uh, kind of like these lines. Um, that's very normal. That's just extending the features so that uh, you don't have like a white background, a black background, something like that. Completely normal, totally fine, and it absolutely does not mess with uh, the accuracy of your model or anything like that. Completely fine. So let's see what else. You see we already have our rows and our tulips. So let's go ahead and look at these. In our rows, we can see we have it uh, very shared, very cropped there. Um, the same drawn out attributes. This one's completely rotated and sheared and yeah, this one's rotated even more and uh, sheared and cropped the different brightness so this worked exactly as you want uh, and uh, in application you can see this works as well uh, in application you of course want to generate way more files than four for each given that you only had one image to begin with and you could even want to do more like a shear range of 0.4 or something like that uh, in the next Next video, we're actually going to work with uh, how to do this at runtime. So 
you're you you create a whole new um, neural network, you know, and you have a small data set, but you want to generate these. Uh, you want to augment your data at runtime of your model without having to create a you know a crap ton of pictures and have to work with moving that data everywhere. Uh, that's what the next video is going to be about, and I uh, hope you check it out. Thanks.